Good morning and welcome to this service, short service of morning prayer from St John's Church in Orangefield. My name is Norman Jardine and um, Heather, my wife, will be helping me out in the service by reading the responses of the congregation and, and reading the scriptures. We're here to worship the Lord and to give him thanks and praise for all the good things he's done. King David celebrates God when he says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. He'd be thinking of that, his benefits, his blessings in the service. But David goes on to say, Praise the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all your sins and cleanses you from all iniquity. We acknowledge our need of his cleansing and his forgiveness as we draw into his presence. We join together in the confession from the Book of Common Prayer. Heavenly Father, Father. We have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you and against, against our neighbour in, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And God assures us of his grace and his mercy and forgiveness. We pray for that. Merciful Lord, grant to us, your faithful people, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we know we're forgiven and cleansed through the blood of Jesus. We, act, we join in a short act of praise. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Heather and I are going to read a psalm together. It's Psalm 146. We're using the words of the English Standard Version, a psalm of praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the one who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Heather's got the scripture reading from the New Testament. The reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 10. Spiritual blessings in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, 
things in heaven and things on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, God's word reveals God in his fullness and his truth and his love. We respond by professing faith in that revealed God. As we join in the, confession, as we join in the Apostles' Creed, confessing our faith in Christ Jesus. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And, and he, he will, will come, come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. As we come before that great God in prayer, we begin by a prayer that he taught us, that Jesus taught his disciples. The words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue in prayer with the collect for this week, this week that we're in. Almighty God, you have made us for yourselves, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. And as we pray, we remember those that are suffering at this particular time. We'll be thinking about God's blessings in the midst of sufferings and difficulties in a moment or two. But let's pray for those going through hardships and hard times. Father God of all mercy and power, we pray for those who are struggling, struggling with the effects of the COVID virus uh, pandemic, struggling health-wise, for those in hospital, for those critically ill. Show your mercy and love. For those that are family members standing, watching on, just feeling helpless and hopeless, grant your strength and your courage. For those that are carers, for those that are doctors and nurses and care workers, for those that are essential workers in hospitals, grant your grace and mercy and sustaining power. We pray that there will be a turning, a turning back to health and good way and good days, a turning back to the ways of your love and mercy revealed in life. And health and strength. To relieve those who can through suffering at this time, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray for those that are suffering business wise, for those that are going through economic hardship, for those that face the closure of businesses, for those that face the loss of their jobs, for those that face worries and anxieties over mortgages and over their house and the futures. Lord, may those that are going through hard times know that you're the God with us in hard times and turn to you and trust in you and find your peace in the midst of the sufferings. We pray for government to have plans and purposes, to have abilities and gifts to bring to pass a change and to bring to pass a reordering of the economy that will mean people will be cared for and loved through this time. Just be with those in all these sorts of positions and grant your wisdom and your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. But as well as a time of suffering and aching and, and pain and difficulties, it's a time for thanksgiving. And in the, midst of the, in the midst of our pain, I want to use an ancient prayer of thanksgiving. It's called the Prayer of General Thanksgiving. And we want to use it, even though its language is dated, its, 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 its path is brilliant. Its words are great. They give us a chance to thank God in the midst of it, all the aches and pains of these suffering times. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we ask you, give us a due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. I want to reflect on some of those thoughts and some of those words and that prayer itself. I want to reflect basically on how, in the midst of all the sufferings, we can know God's blessing and his abundance. We can know God's presence and God's peace. That passage of scripture from Ephesians that Heather read is a passage that speaks about spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. And we need to look for those blessings at this time. God is a God who blesses us. Now that's a strange word too, almost like the English of the uh, prayer of thanksgiving I prayed a moment or two ago. Blessings is a strange word, but it simply means God pours out his goodness and his grace and his love upon us. He wants us to know good and to, he does us good. He seeks to be good to us and seeks us to receive his good, his blessings in abundance. Paul writes this, Praise be to the Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. But yet sometimes believers, not least anybody else, Sometimes we believers fail to see what God has done for us and his blessings. A colleague of mine from some years back called John Berry told a story. He was from Derby in England and he told a story about seeing this old lady in Derby. He'd seen her that often he got to know her. She troopsed around the streets of Derby town centre. She carried with her a shopping bag. It seemed to be that she had in that shopping bag all the possessions of her life. She had nowhere to live, she had no bed to lie on, she slept in the park benches and under the arches of the railways. She just was a pauper. She just was someone who seemed lost and alone and uh, totally ill at ease in the world. John got a call from the local hospital, from the sister in the hospital who he knew he was a member, she remembered his congregation. And she said to John, would he come up? Because this wee lady had come into hospital, this beggar lady had come into hospital. And John went up and he went into the ward where she'd been and he looked all around but he didn't see anybody that he recognised. And then he went into the sister's office and said, is she not here? Is the, is the lady not here? And she said, she's here all right. And the sister took him out and showed him the lady and he didn't recognise her. She was all cleaned up. Her hair was done. Her clothes were changed. She was a different woman. But it wasn't to see her at that particular moment that the sister had called him in. She had another purpose in asking John to come in. She took John back into her office again and said, I need you to witness what I'm about to do. I need to, you to prepare to sign something here for me at the end of this. What she was prepared to do and what she did was she took the shopping bag and she just opened it up. And John was astonished because inside the shopping bag were pound notes, five pound notes, ten pound notes, twenty pound notes, a hundred pound notes. The bag was packed with money and all, with paper money of all currencies. There were thousands upon thousands of pounds in it. John was astonished, the sister was astonished, and then they just thought that this wee lady, who had gone around in poverty, who had gone around as a pauper, who had gone around without a friend, it seemed, in the world, nowhere to lay her head had all the riches that she needed there in that very bag that she carried around. And the picture and the lesson is that Christians, believers in Jesus, let alone anybody else and everybody else, sometimes live like paupers, as though we were scratching a living out of the dust and spiritual things. But God's not a God who treats his people like paupers. God's not a God who doesn't give us what we need. God gives us Jesus. And in giving us Jesus, he gives us all that we need, 
All God's good gifts are wrapped up in Jesus. Jesus opens up a box of delights for us. And Paul reflects in that in this passage that Heather read from Ephesians chapter three, chapter one, verse three onwards. That passage delights in God's gifts. For instance, listen to verse seven. Paul writes, in him, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. We Christians are blessed indeed. We're blessed with the gift of God that is salvation when we trust Jesus. That gift of God that is salvation is a rich and a delightful and a glorious thing. It cleanses us from the past. It cleanses us from sin. We're washed, maybe unrecognisably, like the little lady after she was washed, unrecognisable to John and others in their, their first encounter with her. But we're washed by the blood of Jesus. We're made clean. We're made new. Forgiveness through his blood is what we're promised here. That forgiveness also includes redemption, which has been set free. The redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. We're set free. We need to be cleansed. We need to be made clean. We need to be set free, released. But we are set free. We are a free people. My chains fell off. My heart was free, writes Charles Wesley. I rose, went forth and followed thee. Forgiveness of sins. Cleansing. Redemption from sins, freedom. And those are just the two of the gifts that are the opening gifts, if you like. That's when you open the box, you find these things first, but there's much more to delve into. There's adoption in Christ, being brought into God's family. God's sons, God's daughters, what a delightful, magnificent, wonderful thing that is to be God's children. And as God's children, we receive gifts like peace and love and joy and hope. We're offered all of this in Jesus Christ. We're offered it all, but we sometimes are like that little lady. We fail to look into the box or look into the bag. And we think we're basically poor, spiritually poor. This is not about physical, this is not about actual poverty. This is not about material poverty. This is about spiritual poverty. This is not about spiritual rich. Uh, this is not about earthly riches, it's about spiritual riches. But the spiritual riches far surpass anything else that God that we can ex expect and God gives us to God gives it to us freely. We have got to delve into that box and take hold of those gifts and take hold of those things. Those are God's blessings. That's what the word blessing means. All those great, wonderful, good things that God gives us freely because of Jesus. He lavishes his grace upon us in Jesus Christ. He wants us to delve into it ourselves he wants us to take those things and use them and delight in them and rejoice in them. But he wants us to share them with others. To share the love of Jesus. To share the peace of God that passes understanding. To share the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. How desperately we need to share hope in a world like we're in today. How desperately. We who should be filled with hope. Not because of COVID or some solutions to the COVID crisis. But filled with hope because we've got a, a God who loves us and cares for us. Will protect us. Shelter us under his wings. And get us safely home. All those things we are to delve into and to share ourselves. But to pass on to others. To pass on something of the love of Jesus. To pass on that gift of forgiveness. In whatever way it means we heal relationships with others. Help to set others free. From all kinds of damaging uh, things that the world brings to them. The chains that the world puts on them. Blessings in Christ. We need to count those blessings. We need to make those blessings something that we enjoy. But we need to make those blessings something we share with others. I've caught up with the rector because he this morning was preaching on the same subject in a different way. But he talked about the hymn, the old hymn, Count Your Blessings. And I'll finish with this. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. That's a very important thing to do. We need to feed our souls on those sorts of things. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Blessings in abundance, but blessings that grow in the soil of even difficult buffeting, buffetings and bruising and batterings. They're not for easy times only, they're for all times. Those blessings are there 
We need to lift up our eyes to God and receive them, reach out and grab hold of them, enjoy them ourselves and pass them on to others. Let's pray. Lord, we count our blessings and how joyful and wonderful we find them to be. Thank you for all your good gifts in Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and be with you. And make his countenance shine upon you. Lift up his smile upon you. And give you his peace. Amen.